Good day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In today's video we're going to talk about low speed pre-ignition, what it is, some of the causes, and how lubricants contribute to um, low speed pre-ignition. Alright, so what is it? LSPI obviously stands for low speed pre-ignition. And if you think about the normal operation of an internal combustion engine, that's a, a four-stroke engine, just after the, the piston gets to top dead center is when you'll have um, ignition of the fuel, right? And then it's obviously going to push out all the exhaust gases. What happens when we have LSPI is that we have the same kind of cycle, but the ignition starts before we actually get to top dead center. And you get this pressure wave which is acting against the motion of the piston. Now obviously this is happening at sort of 1500 to 2000 RPM. So with the speed and the, the torque that's being generated, um, it can do a lot of damage to, uh, to the piston. And it's become this sort of emerging problem um, that is getting more and more widespread. Now if we were to look at a graph of pressure versus time, Again, in normal operation, what you'd expect is effectively a, a sine wave, right? Where there is a bit of a pressure peak um, on the exhaust stage. Um, but you can kind of label this as, you know, top dead center, we've got ignition, and then you've got peak pressure. What happens with LSPI, though, is that we get um, pre-ignition occurring before top dead center, and it looks something like this, right? So again, sinusoidal wave, but with pre-ignition, you get a huge spike in pressure, and then you get this sort of sawtooth shape as it as it comes back down to um, to normal operation. So that huge spike in pressure can be extremely damaging to engine components, and we're starting to see more and more engine failures. This is something that's on the radar with all the major OEMs. So in fact, you know, Ford, GM, um, you know, all the big American manufacturers, they've all uh, been in contact with people like the uh, you know, the SAE, um, ILSAC, trying to uh, really get to the bottom of what are the causes of low speed pre-ignition. So what are the causes and how do lubricants um, contribute to the, the actual problem itself? Well, we know that it happens at low speed and high loads. So typically between 1500 and 2000 RPM is when it happens. And it usually occurs in the acceleration phase. So when we're putting the foot down to the floor, um, you know, as we're going through those low revs into higher revs, that's when we tend to, to see LSPI. It's become much more prevalent with the advent of small turbocharged direct injection engines. So what happened was that in a drive to um, increase fuel efficiency, engine sizes across the world got much, much smaller. You know, back in the day, if you had ever heard of the idea of a, you know, one and a half or two litre engine, that was kind of laughable, right? Back in the day when fuel prices were low, you know, 5.8 litre V8s were, were pretty reasonably common. Now there's this drive to efficiency and engine sizes and displacements are getting much, much smaller. Well, in order to get more power through uh, such a small engine, you need to increase the amount of fuel and air that can be put through that small package. And so that's why we've seen much more turbocharging and much more direct injection. So there are several theories. Um, one, the, sort of the, the two main ones are oil droplets causing this pre-ignition and another one causing deposits. Now, these two don't have to be mutually exclu exclusive. They could both be happening at the same time. So what do I mean by oil droplets? Well, if you're familiar with the sort of geometry of, of the piston and the cylinder wall, right? So you've got the piston and it generally has three rings. So there's one ring at the top, which seals the uh, exhaust gases from the crankcase. There's usually a backup ring below that. And the, the final one, the third ring is what we call the oil ring, which kind of uh, establishes an oil film on the cylinder wall. Now this area here, right, is where we think that oil gets trapped and with the upward velocity of the cylinder, oil droplets get thrown into, uh, into the cylinder. Now, why is, that, why is that a problem now as opposed to before? So with direct injection, and particularly at low speeds and high loads, what we are seeing is that we get um, a lot of fuel 
forced into the combustion chamber, right? Fuel mixes with lubricant, but it lowers its viscosity because fuel is at a much lower viscosity than lubricant. It tends to get stuck in this area at the top of the piston, just above the first compression ring, right? And because it's at such low viscosity, when the, the piston is traveling up at considerable speed, it kind of throws a droplet into the combustion chamber. So what does that kind of look like? Well, what you can imagine is right at the left side, right, we throw um, a bit of oil up. It's quite volatile at low viscosity. It vaporizes in the pressure of the combustion chamber and it auto ignites. Now, a similar thing can happen with um, cylinder deposits. So you can imagine that if you have a bit of soot or, or something on the, the cylinder wall, right, at, because it's at such high temperatures, if you have a little bit of residual fuel in there, it will also ignite, right? So it's, it's basically functioning as um, another spark plug because it's, the soot is at such high temperature. What that causes is a, a compression wave, if you like, to travel against the motion of the cylinder. Because remember, the, the cylinder at this point hasn't reached top dead center. So it's traveling upwards and the compression wave is spreading outwards from the source and it's actually um, acting against the motion of the cylinder. And that's why you see so much damage with cylinders that have experienced low speed pre-ignition. And in particular, you tend to see it right, right at the top of, um, you know, at the piston crown, as well as that first sort of inch or so um, leading into the piston rings. All right, now what we're starting to see at the moment is that um, the, the lubricant chemistry has quite a large effect on low speed pre-ignition, specifically the detergent chemistry. Um, we did a video on detergents and their functions, um, and there are all kinds of detergents, right? Specifically, it's calcium detergents that seem to be doing the damage, right? So low speed pre-ignition seems to be much more prevalent in engine oils which were formulated with calcium based detergents. Now, if you remember, to achieve a detergent, it was acid plus base makes salt a metal salt plus water, right? So these are just formed um, through a, a like a calcium hydroxide, which has been reacted with an acid to make um, sort of a calcium soap, really. Now, detergents can also um, be TBN additives. So when they're what we call overbased, that's when there is an excess of calcium hydroxide. Right, which means that the, the finished detergent has a lot more um, calcium hydroxide in it, which is a base molecule which is going to help neutralize acids. For whatever reason, right, there are, there are different types of um, base molecules and different types of detergent chemistries. They can be based on calcium, they can be based also on magnesium, for example, is another really popular one. And it seems like a switch from a calcium base to a magnesium base is crucial in helping to reduce low speed pre-ignition. Now, why is this important? I'm gonna do another video on GF6 specifications. So GF6, which is split into GF6A and GF6B, which was released uh, in 2020. So it's a new engine oil specification, which is designed specifically to deal with the problem of low speed pre-ignition. This is a, a, a problem which is only gonna get bigger in the industry because the number of small turbocharged direct injection engines is getting, it's starting to make up a larger and larger proportion of the car park, right? So that as as engines transition to being becoming much more efficient, they are more likely going to experience low speed pre-ignition. All right, I hope that's been helpful for you um, as a little explainer. Um, as always, if you've got questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.